You know, uh, we, we at Eclipse talk about how actually, you know, a uh, lot of exposure to social media, there is a silver lining to that cloud, and which is that since everything is out in the open and everybody is exposed and naked, right, that would drive people to be more values-based and more ethical because any unethical behavior yes. will come out and will work against you. Yes. Uh, what do you think of that? I think that's probably true. There's nothing like knowing that everybody could be watching you right. to, to curb your behavior. But again, from the point of view of how can we operate from our highest potential, I think it's interesting to ask how would you behave if nobody was watching? Mm -hmm. right. um, where would your source of activity come from if nobody knows? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a real test of, of how we behave. So in the interim, I think that is true. It mm -hmm. is helpful that things are exposed and, and made public very quickly. But I also feel like sometimes um, it leads to kind of uh, superficial judgment in a changing of fashion. People are in and out of fashion very mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. One moment you're adulated as a hero, mm -hmm. whether it's sports or tech, the next moment you are just brought down. And in both cases, people are, are very quick to jump sides, mm -hmm. and maybe there's not so much compassion or understanding right. in that. Mm -hmm. So I would rather people see um, these frailties that are exposed mm -hmm. as part of what we're all capable of mm -hmm. and hold up the mirror and say, how would I, how would I behave in that situation? What would I do differently? Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, it's always a, it's a balance act between looking out at the world and what other people are doing and turning that mirror back on yourself and saying, what would I do differently? Mm -hmm. And one of the points that you made in your uh, session was about uh, that internal compass. Yes. So uh, maybe that's the way. Just tell us a little bit more about that. I think this moral compass is very interesting because I think it takes a lot of silence and quiet to find it. Mm -hmm. For me, that, that moral compass started really when I was uh, spending a lot of time in rural Africa and I was completely unplugged mm -hmm. because there was nothing to be plugged into. Right. And um, that awareness brought that moral compass to light. And I, I strengthened it by being in meditation retreat before going to New York, because I think um, it gets tested very quickly. So before you have to test your moral compass, you have to know what it is, and you have to have a chance to strengthen mm -hmm. that, because otherwise you'll be flapping in the wind. Mm -hmm. So I think it's something that continues to develop through life also. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's still a, lo a long way for me to go. Right. Right. And the circumstances that come up will test it and give me feedback on how I'm doing. But um, the other thing is I think we know when we're in alignment with our moral compass, we feel it in our body. Well, yeah. we, we sleep better at night. Mm -hmm. We can look people in the eye. Yeah. And there's a kind of, um, someone mentioned courage. There's a fearlessness that comes from not having to pretend, uh, yeah. not having to change your storyline based on who you're talking to. Right. I, I think of His Holiness the Dalai Lama mm -hmm. and the way he is when he's talking with a very small child yes. or a political leader or a scientist. Um, he's the same Dalai Lama, so mm -hmm. he's not trying to alter how he's presenting himself. Right. And I think that is a source of deep happiness mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And any final thoughts on Lisa Conference? You've been here now for a day and a half. Uh, Tell us your uh, personal experience of our leadership conference. I'm so happy that you invited me and that I, I came. I, I didn't really know so much about Malaysia or about eCliff, but I've been really impressed at, um, I think I was saying to Rajiv, the combination of heart and head and hand that I see here. So many conferences are very intellectual. They're just about the head, many different presentations, lots of data. Um, but here there's a lot of heart. People are talking about feelings, about values, about how that's going to influence leadership. And it's also about hand, about translating it into action. So you don't feel like you want to leave this conference and go back to business as usual. Mm -hmm. You're always thinking, so what would I do differently? Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of uh, conference that I think um, we need to start seeing more of. Mm -hmm. I'm also um, very happy to see influential business leaders here for the reasons that we said earlier that they have uh, the possibility to bring positive change through their own sphere of influence. And I'm also really happy to see the way it's celebrating uh, young Asian entrepreneurs in the region and celebrating that because I think in the same way that the developed world has been held up as a model, in many ways the West has been held up as a model. And I like the rediscovery of the East that is happening here and the kind of reinvention of, of what it means to be an Asian in, in the 21st century that I'm seeing here. 
Thank you very much, and thank you for coming to Lisa. My thank pleasure. You. Nice talking thank to you. you.